Hey everybody and welcome to Anime for Life. Today we're finally going to get to the second part of Doki Doki Literature Club after an entire month. I've been pretty busy uh, recently uh, with, you know, holiday season coming up and all that. Um, I'm also um, training a lot and helping a lot, a lot with my martial arts testing coming up. so. I'm, getting the little guys ready for that, so I haven't had a lot of time to really sit down and do longer length videos. That's why any videos I've posted up have been like 30 seconds or something like that. But today I finally got some time to myself, and I'm going to get to the second part of Doki Doki uh, Literature Club. And I've also been having a friend of mine uh, uh, talked to me about it recently and she keeps going on oh have you gotten to it have you got it and played it and if you have like have you gotten to such and such it gets really good so I was like fine I guess I'll play it uh, while I have the time um, and this part I guess I have to make a poem or something <coughs> oh, sorry about that um, I'm not very good at poems. I'm good at writing actual stories. Um, if you go ba back in uh, into my uh, videos, you'll actually see I actually put up a, a bit of a story. I'm actually in the works of writing. But when it comes to poetry, not too good. But let's give her a shot. So it says, depending on who likes them, something good to happen. Gotta make sense. If it, do if it doesn't, no one's gonna like it. They're not giving me a lot of good words to really make anything up to it. Now it's just like not it's just evolving to nothing. Give me something I can use, goddammit! I just I just noticed that now.
That makes no fucking sense at all. I'm not good at poetry, but... Anyway. Uh, hi again, Rebel. Glad to, glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. And write shitty poetry. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Rebel. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Uh, making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. It depends on the literature! Oh, come on. Mikey deserves any slag. I'll do you, Natsuki. Sorry, to, uh, told me you didn't even want to join clubs this year. I'm not even going to be the bitch. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to you know, just come here and hang out or what. If you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for somebody who keeps your manga collection in the club room. Uh -huh. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! That's right, Natsuki, it is. And it's art. Swiftly defeated, uh, Natsuki flops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Rebel always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. That's true. He helped me with uh, busy work without me even asking. I like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. You almost set your house on fire once. That's so... <laughs> You know what? My my brother actually did that once. And truth be told, so did I. <laughs> I actually did set my house on fire once. That was very scary. Uh, you two are really good friends, aren't you? Uh, I may be a little jealous. How come? You and Rebel can become good friends too. Um, Sayori. Hmm? As usual, uh, Sari seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, you even brought you uh, something today, you know. W wait, Sari? Yeah, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? No, never mind. Sari made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Yeah, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Knife in the back. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well... Um, here. Yuri reaches into her uh, bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. How to kill my frickin' jealous lover and get away with it. <laughs> it's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't want to even, even if you don't usually read. I swear I can even read it in English, I swear. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Oh, I'm being hit on. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you! I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. Look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Her face is already buried in a bug. I can't help but notice her intense expression. She was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. Slump down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? 
I guess I could always read some of the book theory here. But I'm feeling a little too tired today. I could probably fall asleep right now. Close my eyes and end up listening in on one sort of Sayori's conversations with Monica. They're probably gonna seem really lean compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, can't give up. Festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that uh, the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not all that, you know? Uh, we just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if you come up with the most fun thing ever. Nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, you can do things to uh, speak their creative mind. What's this? Sorry, is taking this really seriously? Where to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? Food always does the trick. What kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! <laughs> good thinking! Natsuki would love to do that. Uh, you're right! Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cup uh, cupcakes speak my, to my creator tummy. Shouldn't be mine? Cakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. When in doubt, make cupcakes. I found myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is, uh, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get in, uh, get all my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ah! I open my eyes to find Sarah's face filling, uh, filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. And this isn't a napping club. That sounds like an awesome club. Uh, does your school have an epic club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. What? Fuck that shit, I'm out. You don't need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking uh, out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's the problem. What about you? You look out for me uh, better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. So none. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over your face. Eh? Sayori glanced around at herself. How's it written all over me? What an idiot. You're clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all over all around here. Yeah? I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need to rush for this. Uh, my hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your brow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. I just did. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Wow, I'm an asshole. 
Hey, you meanie. Thanks. You don't even keep your bl uh, blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but she'll thank me later. I'm starting to button her blazer from the bottom. Now, once you see how much better it looks, change your mind. I see, I see nothing wrong with her. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? Don't say that! You make me feel weird about it, stupid. Wow, there's a singer thing you said. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? I... I... I guess? Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? Oh, are we going to get our fan service moment here? I struggle to put a, put a close the button near your chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> I it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner than you, that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. D don't say that out loud! <laughs> Anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? It's so stuffy. Mm, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew, that's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying like that it's a good thing? Because, if I had a boyfriend, I mean, he wouldn't even let you do things like this. You take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. So basically, she wants you to be the boyfriend. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting out and going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really uh, are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible, impossible to tell you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Huh? Monica somebody calls out. Why don't we uh, share the poems we wrote just now? You mean that piece of shit garbage that I wrote? Did you give me nothing for? Yay! Rebel, I can't wait till you read yours. All the random just words. Yeah, same. Fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve the poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? You mean just a bunch of amalgamation of words that make no sense? Yeah, sure. You meant by that? <laughs> yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf, torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. You can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I say. Natsuki and Yuri uh, reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their effects. Uh, I do the same myself. Oh, who should I show first? Let's go with Yuri because I saw her jump up and down first. Uh, Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. And trust her opinion to be fair. You suck! Hmm. Yuri stares at the Minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. 
Oh, so, sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. It's okay. It sucks. I know. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that I might be after reading through it. Oh, so it's that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri uh, braised her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while before uh, to get used to new people. Uh, it's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable things I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter and form fit the two together. And the result is that they is that uh, both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. When Siri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice. And, uh, by example, trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, but... Biased? How? Um... How? Never mind. That helps. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri some, uh, smiles dreamily, as if there is a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. And after all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Uh, let's see. Ghost under the light. Uh, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Yes, I can read cursive. I'm bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of his future. I bathe. Uh, calms breathing, air, present, but living in the past. Light flickers, I flicker. That makes loads of sense, but more sense than mine. You can actually write cursive, too. Thanks, Grandma. Uh, I, I'm sorry I have such a terrible hand. Fuck, it's better than mine. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all. It looks like you know, uh, But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Yeah? That's a relief. Awesome. I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost duty? <laughs> Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, really. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, it's because you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being sim symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort and able to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. 
yeah, maybe you're right. Guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. <coughs> Got a frog in my throat. Who should I go for next? Ah, oh, let's go to Sarah. Miss Lazy Bones. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Rebel. Bullshit. Stop patronizing me. Eh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Not with that sort of shit, I'm not. Sorry. You must be seriously overreacting. Yeah, she's overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Jeez. Yuri's opinion was way more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. You haven't even seen Natsuki's yet. Are you sure you don't like it it's just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a rebel poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like it can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet of paper against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy to just uh, that you wrote one. It reminds me how much uh, how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. <clears throat> I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Rebel. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something only good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. But then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her now. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning it makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish me away a rainy day? And look above, the sky's blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> what a way to end. Better than mine, though. Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! Just... Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Well, I believe she actually started with no. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was uh, a bad poem. It came out nice, so I should have it. Sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last one. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. You get all cranky. Oh, well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. But next time, I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. I guess I look forward to it. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. Oh, fuck you, bitch. That's a little blunt. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, excuse you. It's not like I said it was bad. I pretty much did. 
just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? Try it, bitch. I'll pass. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. I thought that you'll like it. <laughs> Eagles can climb. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Wow, lots of genius in that one. Yeah. I told you that we were going to like it. And I like it. <coughs> Bullshit. <laughs> what? Just be honest. I am. <coughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Because I don't. <laughs> well, because everyone is in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. Well, they learn how to write properly. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Telling what animals can do that everybody already knows doesn't really hit anybody hard, but okay. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. What about what animals do? No, it doesn't. Whatever. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on work. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps uh, bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Sure, not. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the this one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Hi, Rebel. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, uh, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always willing to listen. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, you want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Rebel. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of bearer that we'll all learn to get past it. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. I had a on my phone. Mm -hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Oh, well... Maybe good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that the that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Seriori's uh, writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. You can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. You knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too. That's because writing with emotion is one of the best parts of writing. Uh, yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things too. Uh, it could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. <clears throat> that's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. 
Everyone else might be a little bit, uh, a bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But uh, I'll always keep you. Uh, I'll always help you find what suits you most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. It doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the wall. Hey, we got a place called a hole in the wall here. Uh, it could have been me. See the direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind like a film left out in the sun. It's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of a meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever, uh, forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he on the other side was looking in. Damn, that one's deep. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting an emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the, in, uh, what was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep, deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on, coming on strong with Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Marco's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the, in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for, me for my mediocre writing abilities. Yeah, like that other chick, uh, uh, uh Sayori Madoka, was it? Yeah, like hers was any better. Even if uh, they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, literature club after all. I sighed. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sarah and, Sarah and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. We gingerly exchange uh, sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, um, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Yeah, Natsuki, that's who it is. Because that's you. Natsuki is the shitty one. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? I, th I thought the same way, Yuri. Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns to return the poem to the desk of one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but I don't know. It really didn't come out nice at all. Bitch. Um. Well, I do have a couple suggestions. 
If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which will they be did me, by the way? Sayori liked it. And Rebel did too. Um, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my already, so I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Myrtle liked my poem too, now. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, someone's pissed. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh, you, you just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Rebel, Rebel appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Uh... Because you already sucked. Are you that full of yourself? No, she's just wearing. I. No. I was full of myself. I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do over to Kitsu. Mm -hmm. Um. Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Rebel started showing up. Not so cute! Um, that's, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting guys! Suddenly both girls turned towards me as they just noticed I was standing there. Rebel, she, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. She could get over herself and learn to, to appreciate the simple writing is more effective. And this would have, wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? Maybe we should jump out from that and not force him to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Rebel. But wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey comp uh, complex feelings and mean most effectively. Convoying them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Rebel? Well, oh shit, being ganged up on. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But remember, I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. <laughs> Sorry, gotta call back up. N Natsuki! Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turned to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sorry. Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Rebel? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sora wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never! It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why... Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Natsuki, Yuri! You guys are my friends! I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. Friends are wonderful people. I love them because they you know their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because. Well. Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they've always been. Big and beautiful. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphant. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. More like that's I'm gonna kill you expression, but I'll make some tea. And Yuri rushes off. Boop. 
and then the next geese gets down with a blank expression on their face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sari is a vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. But to be honest, I might come off as a good leader, but I, mean, I can organize things. But I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess it just means Sari is amazing in her own way, isn't it? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's really suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would mean, hate to see her you know, get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knock. So the genuine person uh, really does make a good present, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It sucked. It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Rebel, how about you? I already told you, it sucked. Yeah, I'd say the same. Bullshit! I mean, it was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you'll learn, uh, you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job than some those who want to impress. I nod to myself and we found determination. Rebel! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I, and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori! What would happen earlier? Eh? What do you mean? You know, between the giving and asking. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've ever seen them fight like that. I promise, they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just um, wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why you they make good friends with you. You know, Rebel, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sari still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation. <clears throat> sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds Sari. <clears throat> Pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an eternal monologue sometimes. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah. <clears throat> ah, fog my throat. Let's do this. Oh, I'm having to write another one now? I'm never going to be able to do a good poem with just you to ask words. Where's Microsoft Word when you need it? I'm like literally just picking random shit that appeals to me now. Okay, I don't even know what to pick that because I clicked too fast.
<coughs> just random shit. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting art. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Rebel. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to being in the club, that's all. Let's see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Can you come with me to uh, buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, sir? And that's what I thought. Why that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> Sorry, nervously retrieved the thing first. She fumbles with the latch and it gets it open. When she turns it upside down, that's it. Let's its contents spill into dust. And the two small coins fall out. <laughs> and I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that hungry eats. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that only leaves one option. You know that? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. Feel guilty? That means you deserve to feel guilty. Give <laughs> me something giggles. Yeah? Noticed that she was listening. Her face is in her book as always. Huh? I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Similar attitude. Yuri! Tell Rebel to let me borrow some money. If that's. Don't get me involved in like that story. Besides, you should only buy what can, you, know, you can responsibly afford. Frankly, after pulling this stupid little stuff like that, you're suffering a fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun side of you. That's... There's no way I think you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad and I have to accept the revolu revolution. Yeah, yeah, retribution. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> that. Still, coming from you, Sarah. Yeah, like, I, I can't afford something, so I'm gonna make a whole fucking revolution and turn the whole school upside down. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. She already knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing you to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Just watch her. Yeah! I don't know where something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles on her desk. No! What was. Eh? Okay. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry, glances around. Is is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitutions. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> That's okay. That's so nice of you. <laughs> yeah, throw a cookie in her face. I'm so happy. Sorry, hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sorry, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Hmm? Sorry, suddenly clasped her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot just over one cookie. 
Natsuki takes a fight of Rome. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But here's his chocolate. Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? Ooh. Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> so he gets out of the seat and go find Natsuki and wraps her arm around her. Ah, jeez! I get it, I get it! Cookie still in the hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sari off her. Oh. Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Not full, Sari trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes! Monica, can you tell Sari? Eh? Natsuki glanced around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. Probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica, mm, Monica chose a club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glanced at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh, makes no sense though. You have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I don't know where you play music as well, you You play music as well, Monica. Yeah, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, no one lay down, Herbal. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. Let's see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to, uh, to leave out Sarah's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. <clears throat> it looks like everyone has already settled down. Sarah's somehow already finished her entire cookie. Well, it doesn't even take long to finish a cookie. Mm. Uh, Yuri is back to a book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Rebel! Rebel! Sherry suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna take some posters and stuff. So, I need to go find some crowns and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica. I'll be, uh, we'll be back soon. Are you going with Rebel to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. No, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring into costumes and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It's just a suggestion. See if you can find pro uh, post paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Rebel? Yep, let's go. Sari and I exit the club. Follow behind as Sari hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, I feel 
feels like I'm taking a kick to a mall or something. Zori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how we, uh, you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? What kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds... Rebel. Rebel? You're not thinking about it uh, the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. About performing them. Like you say, the lines of the poem, like, Between my feet, the last remaining flowers beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing a final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, one once prosperous field before me is but a barren waste. Like that. Sorry. I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You mean... I'm working super hard on this, you know. I, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sorry, spins herself around in, in the hallway and spin. Hey, Rebel, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sorry like this. In the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room one uh, in my room more and more. So going and venturing the story brings out uh, about a special, a special sort of feeling I forgot to I had to me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sorry uh, heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sorry pulled a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. Kind of dirty. Sorry, puts the uh, starts pulling various kinds of box. Really cool. All right, that's one down. I'm constructed. You still need to find. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Well, at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Yeah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Yeah. Sorry, bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. Ouch. She falls. She falls to the floor and crayons spill all over the back. You okay? My forehead. Sari clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. It's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sari is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sari slowly and recently releases her hand from the floor. Two brush her bangs to the side. No. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on her from the center of the forehead. The bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Rebel. Where would I even find ice Not this time? Oh, I guess I could. I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sarah makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? Be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sarah on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it would be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. I know Sari likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sari. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. 
At least they were already in the, uh, already in the wrong spots before I uh, spilled them. Sorry, here. And sorry, the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sarah opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sorry, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sarah replaces the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. You'll feel better soon. Looks like, we, like you cleaned up most of the crowns, so that's good. Hey, Rebel. This kind of reminds me uh, you of growing up, doesn't it? Yeah? What do you mean? You know, how we, uh, we used to play outside all the time. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually f uh, fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things, I couldn't. I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? I can think of it, and I really do remember a bit. Because I was always so focused on the games that I didn't pay enough attention to. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Rebel. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. I know, I'm perfect. D don't call me that! And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Rebel. I'm so glad there's nothing changed between us. Do you think that it'll be like this forever? Forever? I'm honest with myself. There's no telling where we'll uh, each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sari has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside, so, uh, that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. I'm just gonna see her for it either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sorry, hops to her feet. Ah. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Mm. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. Avala Sari out of the closet. Sari plays with bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club. Ah, you're back! Tiny, just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Eh? Sorry, your forehead. It's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with crowns and some out my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway, just out of the sea says it, and then everyone's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, were you able to find anything you needed? Uh huh, I have it right here. Eh? Sorry, frantically glanced around herself. I forgot all this stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up on doing all the work, Cuddle. Oh, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. I shouldn't be mouth mention of words. 
after making the crayon uh, box, yeah, or after making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Let's go with Monica this time. Hi again, Rebel. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe uh, soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I'll give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. You can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not like or unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want me to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. Endless, cake of fun, meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, creating waveforms. Speaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. Endless poem, poem of meaningless. Load me. Wow, that one was dark. Are we getting to the dark parts of this thing? Hmm. Seems more abstract than the last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I read it. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space the words could totally uh, change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So, putting it that way, not every poem is about Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Ooh, are we breaking the fourth wall here? Or when something unexpected happens. Uh, wait, is this tea and tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Uh, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I think that was a fourth wall breaker. And with that, I'm going to save my game. Let's go to Sayori. Rebel, I really love your poems. I can't believe you're hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. No, they're not. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the one, only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! You're not even Natsuki. Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. 
It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? What? what, what, what? Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm guessing you're a bad cook. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can for myself. You have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting me in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you? So, uh, sorry. Uh, I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe? Sorry, starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Rebel. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because. Well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. You're really? Snap. <laughs> ah! I broke my pencil. Sarah Hazley bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being in the tent of her surroundings, she bumps right in. This is sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. Bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sarah clutches her uh, the dust beside her to support herself. And he's shaking. I'm, I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sarah. Yeah. I grab Sarah's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't uh, read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. The bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Hmm, that's a dark way to start. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Uh, little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Yeah. Each bottle is starlit to make amends. Sometimes when a friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Or down comes a bottle to save the day. Uh, night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my finger fingers go. Like exploring the dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding the looking things. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off from my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time uh, time lapse. An empty shelf, and I could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in, my, in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Every and every bar, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it chatters against the towel between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't, aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That ended darkly. Holy crap! Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Now I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being really cheerful. Well, never mind. 
thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so we should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Which may be sooner than you think. Nah, <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no, no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than the last one. Fuck you. But I can't really say it's any better either. But, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck from the wreck I'll take a few. I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, you think that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well, then keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. I hope not. That's, uh... Something tells me not to keep completely honest Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Suri's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But she never really struck me as her type. Suri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so... Er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Fuck you too! It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Fuck you! I hate this bitch! <sighs> that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would have just fly around. Uh, she would probably just fly away like let, letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to be in my point. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. Hey, some spiders are cute. I'm like jumping spiders. Uh, that's why I'm not friends with her anymore. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound. The rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Oh, man, the 10 out of 10 poem writing here. Uh, Amy has lots of friends. I always hear her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. One of her friends start to like spiders, too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she, it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off than with spiders on And I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. You hate spiders. You <laughs> get it. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. You drop someone because they like spiders. Like anyone would agree with that subject of this poem is not being really sure. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Maybe not some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of, uh, if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, or as long as they're not hurting anyone, you make them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I 
I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Oh, yay. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Rebel. Your skills are already improving. If you say so. Really? Thanks, Kitty. Coming from you, that means a lot. It? it it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much. It seems like you can get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. That of course can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work, uh, work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. But give me something to use! Write down the things you see and hear. It's one way to truly uh, enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. This is the poem you wrote for today. Goody nods and timidly hands me your poem. Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. Uh, my attention was caught by the scuttling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies. As an, as an an? Great grammar, it should, should be as a one, wandering human. Or unordinary? Either way, that's horrible grammar. Because whatever. Uh, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious but uh, well aware of the consequences. I'm well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. Bread, my hungry curiosity, a raccoon, and an urge. The moon uh, increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. A slice of bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. I could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my head is always, uh, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic uh, behavioral. I think that one's behavioral. That one I can't really do. Condition. A slight spread, and I feel myself again. Um, it's a little more boring than this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. Just like knives, apparently. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. I'm using the poems of it, poems of it as a canvas to express vivid imagery, conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? Uh, about someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She, she did? Yeah. Talking about how it doesn't matter uh, what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing with it. Uh, sharing it with me. After all, if I had 
I mean, I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness here. I really hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, we really have to do something for the festival. Yes, bitch, we do. It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. It's a concern of mine as well. I don't uh, really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sorry, has been working with posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to do for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to have, be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So you're always putting it all the posters in case anyone wants to go ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring the poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Nessie. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it. Imagine it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask you to say your poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I've kind of heard about that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're, we're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and you know, each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what the literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same things that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if, it all, you know, if all it takes is standing in front of your room for two minutes and resetting at home, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess I didn't need no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any hard to Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get over it and get it over with. All right! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be done. Oh gosh. Let me find Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice uh, reciting them in front of each other. In, in, in no way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off uh, to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, 
Let's see. Monica flips through her notebook for the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows uh, exactly how to apply emotions behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Is she simply natural? Glance around. Everyone has their eyes on her. It's very nice. He has an intense expression that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Harry? I, I'll go next. What? what? Giddy's fired up all of a sudden. Giddy clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called Be Anxious and he glances at the each of us. You can do it, Giddy. It, it's called After Image of a Crim Crimson Man. Giddy's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yudi gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yudi gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect time. That's hard to say. Uh, this must be a rare glimpse into the writing fire Yudi keeps concealed inside her. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Then he snaps back into reality and glances around as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone you know, joins me after and we give Yuri the recognition that she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem up to her chest and rushes back to, into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sari hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks in the This one's called My Meta. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Sorry, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it uh, uh, like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sarah begins your poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sarah is. It's strange and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't make much of it. But hearing it come from Sarah's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sarah meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought it needed to read through. Sarah finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sarah. <laughs> you can rebel like that. I guess that's a good sign. Good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, sorry. Uh, the, the atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't uh, work quite as well with uh, that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work with them. They might need a little more force behind Depending on what you read. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. You don't have much time before the festival or not. Okay. 
No, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> Don't make me go before Rep. Fuck you! I hate this bitch! It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. She's like the total Sunder. She's an irritating Sunder. Might as well let Rebel lower the standards a little bit more they have to do. Okay, seriously, that was uncalled for. I can write way better than you can, bitch. I'm just not giving anything to write well with. That's the key. It's fine, it's fine. It's not fine. I might as well get it and get it over. But it's not like I have much of a reflection on what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terrible. Yeah, I hate situations like this. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive a pause in my Sorry, I'm not really good at this. Else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in writing. And that's something that'll improve your time. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. That's the key takes it back. Once she starts presenting the poem, her sour attitude disappears slowly. While she's still a little unenthused, the poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when you spoke to the The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make, make me do that again. Oh, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. What? I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, I don't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, uh, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's, what it's like now. Make sure to pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue with that. Um, as for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. Stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as I already want to do my best to get through. For the sake of the club, pressing Monica, and I have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two. Always going home together. I like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Jeez, guys. What makes such a big deal out of it? Must be a living in this place. to respond to that. It's okay, Rebel. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Oh, well. I think I'm going to leave it there for now. We're sitting at an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I wanted to make this one longer because of how long it took for this second episode to come out. So rather than just going for a little short half an hour sprint, 
decided to decided to make it, you know, a longer playthrough to actually go somewhere this time. So it hasn't hasn't started playing on my fears and what the fuck uh, emotions yet, but um, some of the, some of those poems I've been reading from them have uh, kind of raised my eyebrows a little bit. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really liking this, and I'm really looking forward to when shit hits the fan and what makes this uh, visual novel so, um, not at all, Higurashi-like, I guess. With people like saying it's all twisted and messed up, but that's what makes it so great. We'll just have to find out and keep playing. But until then, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed it, and look forward to the next one when uh, I get the, the chance to put that up. Hopefully it won't be too long. But until then, keep enjoying anime, and anime for life.